a night, or maybe we could say an early morning after he makes history, Mike Fires joins the show. Mike, congratulations on the no-hitter. I was shocked to find out you're the 35th guy to have multiple no-hitters. Were you surprised the number was that high? Yeah, honestly, yeah. Um, I probably don't know half the guys on that list, but there, there are some uh, key names on there that I've watched growing up, and uh, it's definitely an honor to just to be in that talk with those guys. And, um, you know, a lot of, lot of cool names, Hall of Famers, and just guys that have done really cool things in this game. But also, Mike, there are guys that throw no hitters that like it's a lightning strike, right? It's a once in a lifetime moment where, where all things come together. And for you, I mean, you hadn't had your best stuff, obviously, early in this season. So what happens last night? When do you have a sense that what you've got might be good enough to, to throw a no hitter? I think just the games leading up, really, um, I was just kind of you know, not happy with my performance early in this year. And um, it got to a point where I was, I had to take it on myself and say, hey, I got to start picking you guys up. Uh, they, they've picked me up multiple times this season. And for me to pitch how I pitched early on, just very inconsistent. And, um, you know, they signed me back here in Oakland to, to be a guy, to be a guy to rely on and, you know, go out every fifth day and just go out there and compete and, you know, do everything I can as a pitcher to win games. And I wasn't doing that on a consistent basis. So I took it in my own hands. I told these guys, hey, I'm going to start picking you guys up. I need to get back to the pitcher I am and um, really just go out there and, and put it all on the line for you every time. And um, like I said, just just be back, go back to the pitcher that I used to be. And uh, just I want them to have confidence in me every fifth day. And, you know, when I'm out there, I feel like, you know, we're, we have a great chance to win. So, um, you know, I'm just... I just want them to feel that as well, and that's what I need to get back to. Well, you obviously do your job, but in most no-hitters, you're going to have to rely on the guys behind you doing their job. What would you say about the Profar and the Loriano plays behind you in, in giving you the belief that, all right, this is the night where we're going to do it again? Uh, it's, it's sick, man. It's, uh, <laughs> that's why you come to the ballpark every day, man. You, you, see, you see plays like that, it just pumps you up even more. Uh, you know, I was kind of cruising through that game, uh, threw a lot of pitches early on, but, you know, once Profar made that dive and play out there in short right field, I pointed at him, and, and you know, you know we, we, we've all had our ups and downs in, um, you know, this year, and, uh, you know, Profar making that play, I think it just boosted him, his confidence, and also me, and I pointed at him like, yeah, man, like, let's go. And then literally the next pitch, uh, Votto hits one to deep center, and Ramon's tracking it, and... Yeah, I can see him looking up at the ball, looking at the wall, and um, he's timing it up. And I said, I, he, he's got this. And he goes up and catches it. It, it looked routine for him. He, he's done that once or twice this year. So uh, it's routine for him, but it shocked everybody here. And uh, it was just a really cool moment. It kind of gave me a boost to, uh, you know, finish what I started and just pick them up after they picked me up. Having lived through it and done it before, you know, it's the old don't talk to the guy, whatever, whatever the baseball rules are, the unspoken. In this case, like, don't absolutely leave a guy alone. But you, you've lived it before, so is there anything that you tell the guys in the midst of this, or, 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 or how, how did they, I guess, deal with what was going on in real time? Oh, man. They leave um, you alone? I, yeah, I mean, no. Oh well, yes and no. I mean, guys were guys were kind of acting weird. Uh, hey, oh, is that your spot? Is that your? Spot? I'll move. I'm like, yo, chill. Like it's all good. <laughs> like I, I don't care. I, I sit wherever. I talk to whoever. Uh, I'm not that one that's very superstitious that way. I just you know want to have have some kind of seat and just chill out and uh, catch my breath before the next inning. But um, you know, guys coming up and talk to me or asking me or asking me certain things, I, I don't mind at all. I'll, I'll talk. I'll keep. I'll talk throughout the whole inning before I go back out. What's the day after like? Because like in both your no hitters, like you've gone deep, like 131, 134 pitches in both of them. So like day after, <laughs> are we talking about like like I mean arm falling off? What's this day like? I'm holding up right now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's it's all right. Uh, no, I pride myself on on being a guy that you know it's very reliable and and very durable. Right. Um, you know, it, honestly, they they pushed me back a, a day to give me an extra rest, but you know I, I was. I was ready to pitch on Sunday, but they pushed me back to Monday, just, uh, you know, looking out for my health and just being a little bit more safe. But um, if it was Sunday, I was going to be ready to go. And, um, you know, like I said, I, 
you know, I'm just I'm just grateful to be, you know, in the be in this situation and and pitching in the big leagues and have our opportunity to go out there and perform for this team every fifth day. So uh, it don't matter to me. I'll pitch today if I had to. Um, you know, I'll give whatever I can. No doubt. Right on. Last thing I want to close with. I, I read about your pop, man. How cool is this on the East Coast? Because of the light delay, it starts so late. I, I read how he turns his phone off, watches on delay. So as he's waking up, you're still awake on the West Coast trying to catch up to all the text messages. Like, what's that like when you catch up with him real time in the morning and he realizes his boy's done it again? Well, it's a lot of pressure on me because he watches these games every time I pitch uh, before he goes to work. So he's either going to have a bad day or a good day. And um, it was definitely a great one for him today. And uh, But my sister was up. Uh, she saw the game, but she knows not to wake him up. And even it don't matter what's going on. She she can't wake him up. He's got to wake up and, and watch the game, you know, full, you know, from pitch one. And, uh, and he doesn't want to hear anything that's happened. He wants to see it for himself. Uh, he's stubborn like that. And uh, well, he, he was probably way more excited than I was when he called me. Well, it had to be a great Wednesday for him. It was a great late Tuesday into Wednesday for you out west. And uh, as I told you before we started, man, thanks for giving me something to do at 2 in the morning. I'm sitting at my computer. I'm like, wow, we got a no-hitter going. I got something to do here, man. Congratulations on joining that incredible list of guys that have done it twice. Uh, and enjoy, enjoy Mother's Day. I read about how much that will mean, and that's a cool deal, too. So go out there and do your thing, man. Stay healthy. Congratulations, all right? Yeah, thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me on.